Hello and welcome back to part 6 of my Learn to Crochet step-by-step -step tutorial with my free pattern Bee and Flower Coasters. You can find the links to the pattern below. In this tutorial I'll show you how to create the white flower using just cross stitches. This is the finished coaster and by the end of this tutorial we'll have completed the white flower design. You can find out more information about how to cross stitch and how to read the embroidery chart in part 3 of this series. You will need the white flower chart on a screen or printed out, a coaster, part 2 of this series shows you how to make the coaster, yellow, white and black yarn. I'm using mini balls of cotton DK but you can use any scraps of DK yarn, scissors and a tapestry needle and a pencil. Now I'm going to mark where I want to start my cross stitching on the chart. So I'm just going to mark the square here. Now I'm going to count which square this is on the chart. So I've counted up from the bottom and it's the seventh square. I'm going to count from the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's the tenth square. I'm going to double check the other way, but it's central, so it should be tenth. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's the tenth square from the right. I now need to find this starting point on the coaster. If you'd like to see more details of how to do this, see part three of this tutorial series. The stitch markers show where the squares on the chart start. Now although we have 20 stitches and 20 rows before the border was added, there are only 19 by 19 rows on, of squares. Each double crochet has four holes, one at each corner. These are the four corners of each square on the chart. And I need to find this square on my coaster. And it's always worth really doing this well, checking and double checking that you're finding the right square because this places the whole design. So I'm going to count seven squares up and mark the position with my needle. I'm just double checking it just to make sure I'm on the right square. So remember it's the square, not the, the row. And then I'm going to count from the left. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I just need to move my marker along slightly. And to just double check that I'm in the right position, I'll count from the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is my starting square. So I'm just looking back on the chart, I need one yellow cross in this square. So I've already got my needle threaded with yellow yarn. So this is where I'm going to start, the bottom left hand corner hole of the square. And I'm going to leave a tail so I can weave this in later. And then I'm going to do the bottom half of the cross first, just stretching out the hole so I can see where it is over to the top right and then I'm going to do a bottom, in fact I've got that in the wrong place I did it across, I need a cross to the top right and then I come down and I go from the bottom right to the top left and this sets the direction of all my crosses to keep the nice neat finish so then the row above I need one yellow square, a space where the white goes, a yellow square a yellow cross and then a space and a yellow cross. So I'm going in the same direction. I'm going to do individual crosses because there's spaces in between. So I'm going to make sure my bottom half of crosses go in the same direction as the ones I've done previously and the top halves go in the same direction as the previous crosses as well. I'm just putting these three crosses of the second row of yellow onto my coaster. So you can see the spaces in between for the white 
um, crosses for the for the flower petaled in there. And then I look back at my chart and you can see that I've got three crosses together central over the central cross that I've done before. So again I'm going in the same direction, I'm going to do the bottom half first. I'm coming so I'm working from right to left this time. So you work however it it suits you, left to right, right to left. Um, but you just need to make sure the bottom halves of the crosses all go in the same direction and all the top halves go in the same direction. So instead of doing individual crosses this time, I'm doing all the bottom halves first and then I come back and complete them with the top half of the crosses. So there's no right way of doing this. I tried to do it so to keep the back as neat as possible so I haven't got too much yarn stretching across too many stitches at the back but it's something you'll learn the more cross stitching you do to keep try and keep your back neat as well. So that's these three crosses have been completed. My next row is the longest one of the yellow so we've got three crosses with a black one in the middle so we're just leaving a space for that now um, and then three crosses go in um, carrying on on the other side so um, can, the video is slightly out here you can't quite see first but you can now and then I'm starting again I'm working from right to left here I'm doing the bottom halves of the crosses first so I'm doing my three crosses here when you're going in a hole that's already got yarn from a previous cross in, just make sure you don't split the yarn. Um, just all these little things just keep the whole thing neat for a neater finish at the end. So I've done the three, left a space for the black cross and I'm doing the other three bottom half of the crosses. See they're all going in the same direction and then I'm coming back the other way. So hopefully I've got enough yarn to leave a good tail at the end because <laughs> it's already coming out of the, my needle. So I'm just going to complete these crosses for this third, is it third row? I think it's the fourth row of the yellow crosses for the center of the daisy. Just about a long enough tail, I think, left on my of my yarn. So I've completed the bottom half of the yellow crosses. I'm just going to um, weave my yarn into the back of the cross stitches. I'm just going back the other way to secure it. Again, there's no right or wrong way. You just need to be able to secure it as neatly as possible so that it doesn't unravel in the future. I'm also going to do my starting yarn now so it's easier to do these weaving ins as, if that's a word, weaving ins as you go along otherwise you just get them pulling through to the wrong way and they get in the way and get tangled up in the back. So although it's you want to get on with your cross stitching it's much much more pleasant experience if you weave in as you go along. So I'm just putting this, it's a bit tiny this yarn that's left but I can just about weave it in at the back if I can get the it to go through the needle. Pull it through, just snip the end off. And there we have the first part of the yellow crosses completed. Continue doing the yellow crosses following the chart. I've now done the yellow and the black cross in the centre and we're going to start on the first white petal. So I've got my needle threaded with white yarn and I'm just checking where I'm going to put my first white cross 
and I'm going to weave the end into the back before I start. So this is another way of doing your weaving. So you can't see again, I've got the camera in the wrong place, but there we go. I've got it the end at the through the back of the crosses and I'm coming back the other way to make sure it's secure. And I should be in roughly this end up in roughly the right place to start my first cross. So I'm going to do this one white cross and then the two above it. So again, keeping the direction of the bottom halves and the direction of the top halves of the crosses going in the same direction as the previous crosses that have already been completed. Now you'll find here, if, you, if I try to go from bottom left to top right of my next square that's above this one, the yarn will come undone. Um, because we're going in the same hole, or it should do, just that I've caught some yarn at the back. And I'm gonna do that again to make sure I'm not splitting anything, but I'm gonna go from the top right to the bottom left, but it's still going in the same direction as the cross below. I'm gonna do the second bottom half of the second cross and come back the other way. And then I'm just gonna continue following the pattern for the white crosses. That's the first petal completed. So we've done all the cross stitches of that section. Now I'm gonna weave in my last end of that petal. My yarn has twisted a bit, so just untwist it. Trying to keep it neat, so trying to go through the back of different stitches that haven't already had ends woven into them. Not always possible. Coming back to secure it and just snipping at the end. I'm going to continue following the chart, doing the crosses to complete all the petals, and once I've done, I'll be back. So I'm almost at the end now. I've just got a few more crosses to go. All done just have the final end to weave in. So I'm now going to take out the stitch markers. If they've been getting in the way, you can have taken them out before this. And here we have a finished coaster. You might want to tidy it up a little bit. Maybe some of your crosses aren't quite neat and you can just adjust them. If you want to re-block this, maybe not wet block it, but just uh, pin it out to make it square again, even up all your stitches, maybe steam it with an iron. Don't actually touch the coaster with the iron. Just use the steam or you might even have a steamer. And there you have a lovely white flower coaster. That brings us to the end of part six. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know how you got on in the comments and I'll see you on part seven as we stitch the white and yellow flower design.